where I was going home with my wife, we were kind of uh, reliving the experience again and, and asking ourselves how we were blessed. And on the table there, you have the spiritual blessings that we wrote uh, last week, and we were still this revisiting today. Uh, today, the central uh, truth of what I want to what, what I wanted to understand is that we are alive in Christ. We were once dead in sin. In every ramification, we were once not with it. But now we have, we have been transformed from there to here. And the only medium by which we could do that is through one person. Who can tell me? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I felt I should just tell you to clap for yourself, but don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 10, talks about the grace of God. He talks about the grace and how God was able to transport us from that old life into our new life. And when you look at the slides, The next one, please. Can we all read that? Can we see? Yeah. Shall we read it together, please? We were we were alive in Christ, Christ for good works. God did all of this beforehand, that we should walk in good works. We are saved and we should walk in good works. We were made alive in Christ for good works. We were made alive in Christ for good work. So God made us alive in Him, not for nothing's sake, but because He wants us to carry out the good works. And God did all this thing beforehand. We didn't have to work. To do it by ourselves, we didn't have to. Um, we didn't have to labor to do it ourselves. Before we were born, God had already planned this. He planned this that we should work in good works, and we are saved and should work in the good works because good works always glorify God. The meaning of this is this: it's just straightforward. Once we are believers, we give our life to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we are a new, you know, brand new person, brand new uh, bride, brand new existence. But it's not just for nothing. We are not just giving, uh, accepting Christ. Christ is not just leaving us just for that sake, for the sake of, oh, I want to be a new person. Is because he wants us to carry out a good work. So, faith without work, what is it? Dead. It's dead. So, when Christ lives in you, Christ wants you to carry out good works. There is nobody in this world, the scriptures say, who light up a candle and put it under the bed. You will burn the house. But you, he wants you to carry the spirit in you. Let that living water in you flow out and let everyone that is thirsty drink of that living water that is flowing out in you. Hallelujah. When you go to the next slide, just for the sake of time, I just gave an analogy there that I found in one of the books that uh, Nita brought to me. And that analogy was quite Good. I try to summarize it in my own little English, in my own little word. You see, when you imagine yourself in a coffin, you are dying. Then they want to cremate it and say, let's burn this, let's, let's, let's do, uh, give the final burial ceremony. But somebody appeared and said, oh, hang on a minute. No, he's not there. Come on, stand up. And, and as, you, uh, as, he's, as he asked you to stand up, not only that, he takes you home to his daddy's palace, very mighty big palace, and he said, you eat and drink and be fine in this palace. That means 
you have been transformed from the life of old life to the new life. Jesus Christ has already brought you from the old life to the new life. That is just the meaning of this. And that is exactly what Ephesians is trying to tell you in verse 1 to 10. That you sitting down here today, listen to me, you are in, in, living a new life. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves and say, I am a new creation. Because probably when you look at yourself in the mirror and you walk away, you have forgotten what you have seen. It's normal. But it's good to remind yourself that you are a new creature in Christ. So that the devil will see you and you will be afraid, you will be terrified. You say, oh, no, don't touch me, are you mad? Don't you see that God is with you? Don't go there. Jesus Christ is always working with him or her. Don't go there. Hallelujah. So the next slide, please. That brings us to what you find on your table. Now, each table, if you grab the papers I put there on the table, and what we are trying to do is that Paul, the apostle, preach, his preaching is um, based on this four central truth. What Christ did, what Christ did, when he was alive, what Christ represented. You will find this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 to 6, but there is no time to go into that now. But this is any, any message that Paul preaches is always based on this four central truth. If you look at that paper in front of you, those, especially those lines that were underlined, in each table, quickly go through it. If you cannot finish it, don't worry, because we got just five minutes to go through it. You can plug into that, those words that were underlined. Where can you plug it into in these four quadrants? Going from clockwise. I mean, saving death, resurrection, life of Jesus, scripture fulfillment. Where do you do fit? Um, starting from the table at the back where Jackie is seated oh I'm sorry Christine <laughs> so so the first line you were dead where will that fit in Seven dead. dead. Thank you very much. And the next table where uh, <coughs> Phyllis is seated. The second uh, verse used to live. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Hallelujah. You are right. And the third one lived among them at one time. That is verse 3. Lived among them at one time. Yeah, could be life of Jesus. You are right. There is no right or wrong answer. It could be life of Jesus. It could be. It could be still be dead because you were living in those things in the past. Yeah. Okay. Verse four. The next table. His great love for us. That more of more or less of the character of Jesus. Life of Jesus. Thank you very much. So. Uh, raise us up with Christ. Resurrection. His kindness to us in Christ. His kindness to us in Christ. Who is kind? What does that mean about, what does that say about Jesus? His life, his kind, his love, his everything. Hallelujah. So, that's all. Thank you very much. And when you are thinking, talking, talking about the scriptural uh, fulfillment, that one is not really evident in that paper I gave you. It's not evident there. For instance, in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, who, who can remember what is there? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
The Spirit of the Lord is upon you because he has anointed you to go out and preach the gospel. That is something that was said more than 400 years before it happened. It was said before. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, for a child has been born unto us, etc. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 5. This bone will live, prophesy. Prophesy unto the household of Israel. Israel will live. We are alive today. So it's not really that evident, but you have something you can relate with it. Hallelujah. God will bless us in Jesus' name. God's characteristics and attributes are love, mercy, grace, and kindness. He wants us to exhibit all this as we are now living in him. We are living in a new, in a new life of Christ. Christ wants us, wherever we go, to shine and bring out the best in us so that the people can be drawn unto Christ. That is exactly what this uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 10 is trying to, to, to let us know. But now, if we, what, I got this from a gentleman, and I just, I just love it. I, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. When you look at Moses, when Moses parted the Red Sea, he didn't just sit down and say, let's see, fact. He, 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 he took action. He demonstrated what he wanted to happen. And when you, want, when you are living a life of Jesus, you have to demonstrate the life of Jesus. You have to demonstrate the fact that you carry the Holy Spirit in you. That he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. You have to demonstrate boldness and confidence. You have to come to his throne with grace. With, with, with boldness. Hallelujah. But if you are here today, you have not really taken that action. You need to decide today. You need to think about it and decide for Christ. Give, come and serve him. Come and enjoy what people here today are experiencing. Come and enjoy the new life and your life will not be the same again. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, that this new life that you are living in Christ, that you will live it to the fullest in the name of Jesus. God will work mightily in you. He's going to use you for his work. And he's going to make sure that he takes you uh, to the promised land. By the time we get back there, we will understand better. We may not understand now, but God is going to fulfill his promises upon our life in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Yes. Lord Jesus, we thank you for dying for us. You needed not to die, but you chose to die because you wanted us to be alive. You wanted the power of the Holy Ghost that you carry when you are alive. You wanted it to be transferred into us. And that's why at Pentecost you gave us the Holy Spirit to be our comforter, to guide us and to direct us, even when you were not physically here anymore. Yet, you live in us. You direct us. You empower us. And give us that boldness to go and talk to people about you and preach the gospel and do good and carry out all those good works that you have done. Kindness, love. And you want us to reach out to the nations and communities and let them tell them about the goodness of God. We thank you, Father, for this unmerited favor. We thank you because we did not merit your dying, but you chose to do so because you love us. Thank you, Father, for loving us. Thank you, Jesus, for everlasting King that you have been. Thank you, Father, for going to heaven to prepare a place for us. And you are coming back to take us to be where you are. Thank you, Father, for the good work that is going on now. Thank you for the later rain that is falling upon us. Thank you, Father, for this new revival. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.